Hello! Let's have a look at this bloody thing then. It is a Nintendo Entertainment System Nintendo Classic Mini. Oh, isn't it cute? Well, we don't know. We haven't got it out of the box yet, but it looks cute on the box. Less cute on the box. AC adapter is not included. Hmm, we'll get onto that later. Anyway, here it is, the thing people want for Christmas to an extent, and they can't bloody get hold of it because it's very, very short supply here in the UK. Much like the big toy this Christmas, which are things called Hatchimals that all the girls want, and apparently you just can't get them for love nor money, and it's all gone a bit jingle all the way. But uh, yeah, basically these uh, mini, mini NES or mini NES, I'm going to say probably NES and NES interchangeably to annoy you. It's going to be very successful. Look out for it. Um, yeah, people want them and they can't bloody get them, is the short end of it. It's an odd thing, because um, it's not the NES, as we will get on to later, is not really something that has a whole load of actual nostalgia in the UK. Um, it's more of a sort of, our oh, Nintendo cool brand thing. And I wonder if that is sort of being promoted with them. Uh, do you think Nintendo have learnt the value? of understocking, you know, creating buzz around a product by restricting the supply? Did they learn that trick with the Amiibos? You know, is there more value for them to sell 100 items and people stop talking about it, or for them to sell 85 and then everybody's talking about it and, oh look, it's sold out so it must be super good. That helps your brand perception, doesn't it? It's all important stuff, we don't think about it, but I'll tell you what bloody Nintendo does. Oh my god, everybody wants this thing and it's sold out, it must be amazing, and of course if you can't get hold of something, people want it more. Anyway, the upshot of this is they're fifty pounds in the shops, and I had to pay a fucking hundred and twenty-five quid from CEX. Uh, but you kept whinging on at me to show one, so I'm doing it. Plus, I'm going to sell it really quickly afterwards. In fact, if I could have reviewed this quick enough, I could probably have taken it back. Ah, they have like a. 36 hour exchange or something, damn it. Oh, no, 48 hour exchange. Why would they have 36? That'd be really confusing. You'd have to take things back in the middle of the night. Anyway, yeah. Blooming heck, we've got one. So we'll have the number 50 pounds in mind, but we will also think if you want one before Christmas, you're gonna have to sell the kids' legs. And you know how they're gonna whinge about that. So, what's on the box? Lots of pretty pictures of a Nintendo system, as one would expect. There it is in a hand, upside down. That's fixed. Um, yeah, because then it shows you how small it is, doesn't it? Makes sense to me. Here's some screenshots of some of the games included, of which there are 30. And if you want to know which 30, they're these ones. We're not going to get into the actual uh, games themselves. Maybe you like these games, maybe you don't, maybe you never bloody heard of them. I don't know. It's not for us to say. We are merely looking at the hardware as a thing today. Um, the big disappointment is, of course, those 30 games are all you will ever get on this, because it is completely unexpandable and unupgradable in any way. You have the 30 games in here, and that is all you will ever get. If you want different games, you just got to hope they release another one of these systems, you have to buy the whole thing again from scratch. Which would probably be a bit pooey, but who knows, hey? Who knows? Right, what's in the box? I'm hoping a NES Mini, because if not, I've been deep. Yay! Oh wait, it's just some papers. Yay, there it is. So yeah, we've got a nice operations manual. Can't be bothered to look, probably not. Here's a code. Are you all getting a good look at the code? Don't bother trying to put it in. I'll have already used it by the time you look at it. Oh, 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 oh evil. For whatever shitey Nintendo points system they've got these days. I don't know. I had some of the stars before. They were quite good, but um, then they all just ran out and because they're all time limited. I imagine these days of how Nintendo operate um, in this day and age, they've probably got to be... You'll put them on an account and they'll run out after a certain amount of time and most of the stuff you want is bloody vouchers or some gubbins. Who cares? Let's have a look at this. Mmm. This is fun. Many languages that I don't speak. Does it actually have English in it? That's... I don't think it does. <laughs> what? It must have. It must have been at the start and I missed it. There we are, getting started. Connect the USB cable to a USB port, because of course they have not given you a bloody power adapter. That makes me wonder, actually, can you connect this up? through one of the standard phone um, chargers, which are 1 amp, because I connected it to a 2 amp when I was testing it. Hmm. Hmm. Therein lies a question. Jump cut, because I just went to check if it will run off a 1 amp charger. Yes, it will. Hooray! Let us all stand and shout huzzah. Right, here's the box itself. Look how itty diddy it is. It is like a little thing. 
Well, that's it really. It looks like an old NES. It's got a power button, which is a proper power button that goes in and then out. I appreciate that. There's a reset button. Two controller ports, not like the old ones. These are the more modern style used uh, Wii and all that kind of stuff. The top flap doesn't open, which really disappoints me. I know there's no reason for it to, but um, I don't know. It would have just pleased me in some manner. Nothing else on there. Nice and simple. HDMI. HDMI. That is a new connector I've just invented. We'll all be using it next year. It's like HDMI, but also carries smells. No, it's got HDMI out, so you can just plug it into your telly, which is good. And DC in is indeed micro USB, so you can actually plug your phone charger into it. It does come uh, with a cable, which I haven't actually got out. I don't know what sort of... Um... Let's have a quick squeeze. Yep, micro USB cable and an HDMI cable, which we probably all got spare ones off, but hey, it never hurts. Just like it wouldn't have hurt you to put a bloody AC adapter in. I mean, I know you're only saving a few pence, but oh, it's not good when you buy something and then have to fiddle around for a charger. But on the other hand, it is using um, the most common form of charger you will have. It'll pretty much work over any of them, as far as I can tell. And this cable is pretty long. It's also very high quality, so that's all good in it. Here's the most exciting bit for me. An actual modern pad, but it is exactly the same as the old Nintendo one. That's more like it, isn't it? Now you can play your NES games and they will feel absolutely genuine, as jolly well they should. The D-pad feels to me a little bit firmer than any of the NES ones I've got, but that's probably because the NES ones I've got are fucking donkeys years old and this is brand new. So yeah, it's really, really good. It's just the old pad exactly as you would want it. and. I don't know, maybe plug it into a Wii U or something. I don't, I've got a bloody clue. I've never tried. But there we go. I'll tell you what you can do, actually. You can plug in and use the Wii Classic controller if you've got one of those. And the interesting thing about that is it has a home button on it, which you can press to get back to the menu. Because if you're using this, you have to reach over and press it on the bloody console. Which brings us to a problem, friends. Arguably the main problem with this unit. This is a controller cable. We shall call him Hank. Hank the controller cable. I've got bad news for you, Hank. You're too goddamn short. Right, let's plug that in. Here we go. That's as far as it stretches. I can't possibly show you that on camera, actually, which is annoying. But that's not very far. That's like, what, two and a half feet or something? Great. So the problem is, you then have to have this sitting miles out from your bloody television on the world's longest HDMI cable um, if unless your sofa happens to be almost on top of your television. It's ridiculous. Um, I don't know if that's because you have to lean over to press the reset button on the standard here, but it's bloody annoying. And then you factor in, right, that you've got to have it plugged into the sodding mains as well. So you've got one cable going off there, you've got one going to the television, but you can't actually have this away from you near the plug socket or near the television. So you end up with this weird mass of wires. I mean, I'm all right because um, being a sort of tech nerd type, I've got like HDMI cables that are 93 miles long and loads of USB extension stuff, so it was no problem for me. But the whole point of this, surely, is to make it as easy as possible for people to play old NES games. And you've got this slightly ridiculous setup of this tiny, tiny frickin' lead, which is going to spoil it for a lot of people, unless you really are sitting with your nose to your television at most times. Anyway, we should compare this to the size of an old Nintendo Entertainment System, which I've got in the office, so I'll have to do a cutaway. I'm going to reiterate my comment about the controller cable length. <laughs> I've just thought, when did we stop calling these joypads and start calling them controllers? I think it was around the time of the PlayStation, wasn't it? Hmm, what a strange world in which we live. Anyway, let's have a look at what the thing's like when you've actually got it plugged in and you're playing it and that. 
I'm on the microphone now, so I sound different. Yes, the menu is very nice indeed. It enables you to see all the games easily and swap between them at will. It also has this very eye-pleasing set of screensavers that go on if you leave them, and with a jolly bit of background music. What more do you want? Well, the answer is various options, I would assume. And there aren't that many options, but what they've got is fairly useful. There are three different display modes for your games. We'll come back to those in a minute. Um, there are other options for just like, is there a demo and does it shut down automatically, not be really interesting. Pick your language. I was taking with the one I speak. There's some legal notices, everybody's favourite. And the manuals, which disappointingly aren't on here at all. You have to look at the QR code on your smart device, which is a bit rubbish, really. I'd hazard a guess that there isn't actually enough storage room for having scanned pictures on this device because NESROMs, very, very small, scanned images much bigger. The games look and play great. Everything feels spot on exactly as you would want it. Going back to the display options, we have the standard 4x3, which attempts to emulate the slightly stretched picture size of an old television, which I think is probably the best way to play it. It's nice and pin sharp and all that, but also actually looks in the same aspect ratio as the games would have been. Another option is the CRT filter, where they attempt to emulate the look of a cathode ray tube television, but frankly this is a bit rubbish. In fact it's quite a lot rubbish really, it's just basically blurred, got a little bit of shimmy on it, and some overplayed scan lines. I've actually seen people in reviews say that they thought this was like a really amazing attempt to emulate a CRT. What? I can only assume these people haven't actually seen a CRT television in the last ten years or so. And finally, there's the pixel perfect setting, which literally just outputs the game exactly one on one non stretched pixels, which is, you know, pretty much how you'd see it in an emulator on your computer and isn't really how it would have looked on a television. So, a bit pointless having a box that connects to your television that doesn't display it like it would do if it was a television. Do you see? Do you see? Also, bloody hell, this is a good version of Bubble Wobble. I hadn't played the version of Ghosts and Goblins before though, and yeah, this is much less good. It's alright. And finally, there's a really nice suspend system where when you press the reset button, which is annoyingly on the console unless you're using the Wii Classic controller, you get taken to a kind of save state menu where each game can have four different states at any one time, so you can go back to it later without having to leave all the power on overnight like you used to have to in the bloody 80s. The only downside is it can get a bit confusing if the game has its own save system, because you have to use one or the other and enter the game using the method you used last time, or it gets very confused and you end up potentially losing saves. So what's this thing actually like in total then? Well, it's a much, much nicer way to play NES games than the hideous, clunky virtual console shite that Nintendo's been pushing on their newer consoles for years now. I mean, really, like, have to pay a fortune for an ancient game and it never bloody feels right, you know. Um, I mean, I suppose this is really for, for the casual nostalgia market, I suppose. It's nice and easy, you plug it straight into your telly, away you go, you've got 30 games. Probably the ones you really like aren't actually included, but there we are, that's one of those things. But the thing is, if you are really into your old games, or like me, you never stop playing the bloody things, you would have found a way to play them on your television already without this thing. You will have a cheapy Android box or something that you can plug straight in, has all the emulators on, and you can play, you know, all the Sega games, all the SNES games, and indeed all the NES games, not just 30 of the bloody things. Of course, the weakness there is on your Android box or whatever, you won't be playing them on the proper joypad. Oh wait, except you can actually get a really, really good replica, one of these, that works through Bluetooth. Uh, and it's bloody great, actually. I personally have the uh, Super Nintendo one, and it is marvellous. Marvellous in a lovely Bluetoothy kind of way. Um, I suppose, you know, if you you know, you're not that much into it, something you just plug in your television is better, but if you have any real interest, you will have gone the emulation route. I mean, this is just an emulator with ROMs burned into it, you know. 
Um, I suppose one other good thing about this is some money is going back to Nintendo, um, and whereas, you know, if you're emulating, nothing's going that way anymore, but it does beg the question, how many fucking times do we have to pay money for the same games from 30 years ago? Because it feels like too goddamn much to me, but there we are. That's for other people to quibble over, isn't it? We're just looking at the pretty buttons. <laughs> Look, there's an A and a B. So, it's good for the casual nostalgia market, which is, you know, huge for this machine in the USA, but <clears throat> wait for it, I'm going to go off on one here. <laughs> <laughs> Something that really honks my chuff is that people now, uh, kids especially, seem to think that this is what we were playing games on in the 80s in the UK, which is so far from the truth. And when I say this, I mean the Nintendo Entertainment System in general, not the Mini. That only just came out. Keep up, folks. Ugh, dearie me. Yeah, basically, this didn't. This did not sell well in the UK at all. The old NES. It just was. It was barely a thing. I mean, you could buy one, but um, it did not sell well here, and it did not sell well in the whole of Europe. Actually, um, super, super bloody hell. The um, Sega Master System outsold it fairly heavily, I believe. But really, we all had the old 8-bit computers, and sometimes the 16-bit actually, because this wasn't released here until 1986, um, which is about the same time as the. Atari ST and Amiga came out, because um, it was a very different market. I mean, we'd grown up with these home computers. I mean, you know, your ZX Spectrum and your Commodore 64 and your Amstrad CPC and your BBC Micro and blah, 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 blah. All things like that. And the computer market was a lot more mature in this country, but I don't mean that older people were buying them. Well, that, that is kind of true to an extent, um, but in the sense that it had gone through many phases and we'd already had these sort of um, wars between all these different computer types, and then we were looking into the getting the sort of upgraded 16-bit machines and stuff, and this was never really a thing on the radar. Um, partially because the launch was fudged weirdly. They had hardware issues, like it, Mattel made a version first, but they were a bit shitty, so Nintendo basically stopped them selling it and released their own ones. Uh, when these first came out over here, the game prices were just insane. Um, they came down very quickly, if I recall, but they were still far, far more expensive than what you were paying for, like, a ZX Spectrum tape or something. ZX Spectrum tape was, like, £10 for a standard one. Budget releases were, like, 3 or £2. Cartridges for this... 25 quid. And I mean, this is in 80s money, you know. And also, uh, let's be honest here, everybody was pirating bloody Spectrum games because they came on audio cassette tapes. Same with Commodore 64, okay, same with Amstrad CPC, same with BBC Micro, blah blah blah. If your house had a dual tape deck, which most of them did, you could copy your friend's games just onto a cheap blank um, tape. Obviously no way of doing that with a cartridge. And when Dad was uh, working out what to buy you for Christmas, the one that would work out much cheaper was the ones where you were all sharing the bleeding games on them. Which is, you know, it's naughty, but that is how the things were at the time, and it affected the sales big time. Um, to give you some idea, actually, of, you know, how small this machine was over there, not physically, we're not getting into that again, um, there were only two NES games ever to get into the UK's top 20 monthly sale chart. And I really wish I'd written down what they were, because now I can't remember. Oh, no, wait, it was uh, Ninja Turtles and Mario 3. Yes, I do know that. There we are. Um, yeah, they, they, that was it. They were the only ones that ever even appeared in the top 20. Everything else was the different formats on and on forever. The, more people in the UK had a BBC Micro than one of these. You don't hear about the BBC Micro on YouTube, partially because of the massive, um, you know, US skew for it, but also the people making gaming videos weren't born when this was a thing. You know, they were barely born when the Super Nintendo was a thing, a lot of them. So, you know, you just don't hear about it. So there we are. That's got me gone off on one about that, OK? This wasn't really a big thing in our childhoods in the 80s in the UK for video games. It was all different stuff. That's why that book I wrote um, doesn't feature any console games, because it was such a niche thing. It really, really was. <laughs> So, is this worth 50 quid? If you just want something simple to plug into your television, and there are at least, at least 15 games you know you'll spend your money on for this, then yeah, go for it, I say. But do not pay more than 50 pounds. Seriously, do not... Oh God. Do not pay more than 50 pounds. 
just wait till after Christmas when you will be able to get them much more easily. Or indeed everybody who bought them for Christmas because they wanted one because it was rare and then they don't want it anymore because they decided that they don't really want to play 8-bit games, they just thought it looked cool, which is, let's face it, going to be a big part of the market over here because, as I said, in some extreme number of words a mere few minutes ago, there's no real direct nostalgia for it. It's more of a branding thing, isn't it? More than anything. Oh, Nintendo old stuff, cool. Yeah, gonna get this. Oh, actually, I wasn't born when these games were out and I find them difficult to play. Oh no, that's gonna go to the second hand shop. So I reckon you're gonna be able to find these cheap after Christmas. Or in fact, probably just in stock in the shop normally for 50 quid, which is more like it. Oh, and I forgot to mention earlier, yes, you can buy a second one of these for two player fun. Hooray! But God knows how you'll set that up with the tiny leads and all that stuff. Ah, oh, dearie me. It's a solid little package. It's just really got problems with the fact that those are the 30 games and they're all you'll get, so make sure you bloody like them before you put down your money, seriously guys. And of course, the controller lead thing is a bit of a fiasco. Just ask yourself, are you really going to play these games, or does it just look like something that will look cool on your shelf? Subscribe for more.